Welcome to our lecture online. So here we're going to take a look at the inclined plane again, but in this time we're going to work with the conservation of energy principles. That the energy at the initial state is equal to the energy at the final state. When we of course consider all the forces acting on it, the change in the potential and kinetic energies, and any friction, any retarding forces that may exist that take energy out of the system. So we use the general principle that the initial energy equals the final energy, and the initial energy consists of any work put into the system, plus any potential energy it initially had, plus any kinetic energy it initially had, and we set that equal to the final potential energy at the end, the final kinetic energy, and any energy lost during the process. It is positive because we put that on the right side of the equation, it would be negative if we put it on the left side of the equation, so the fact that it's positive does make sense in that way. So typically what we do is we take a look at something like an inclined plane. And let's say that we put an object on the inclined plane that has a certain amount of mass. It is at a particular initial height, let's say h initial, and it's going to be sliding down the incline. So at the end it's going to end up at the very bottom. So at the end h final is going to be equal to zero. Let's say that it starts with an initial velocity equal to zero, and then of course it ends up with some final velocity at the end. If we don't have any friction, if friction is equal to zero, so if mu is equal to zero, and we use the principle that the energy initial equals energy final, what we have to do now is figure out what is the initial state of the system, what's the final state of the system, and we can do that with the help of this equation. That we, any work put into the system plus any initial potential energy plus any initial kinetic energy must equal the final potential energy plus the final kinetic energy plus any energy lost due to friction. So, any work put into the system would be any forces acting on it as it's sliding down excluding the force of gravity because that's already wrapped up in the fact that we're considering the potential energy which comes from the position of the object related to the gravity so we can't use it twice we can't have work put in by gravity plus the initial potential energy because that would be kind of double dipping so in this case since there's no force that's acting there would be zero work put into the system the initial potential energy would be mg times the initial height h of naught no kinetic energy because it's not moving, and that must be equal to the final state when it's over here. Notice the height now is zero, so zero potential energy. It is now moving at some velocity, so it would be one half mv final squared for the kinetic energy final. And energy lost, in this case zero, because there's no friction. Now if there is friction, then there would be work done to overcome friction. Of course, energy loss would be work uh, work done, or in other words, the friction force, and that would be the friction force times the distance traveled along the incline. If the angle of the incline is theta, and this is d, then we can use the equation that d is equal to the height divided by the sine of theta, because the hypotenuse, uh, the hypotenuse d, uh, let's see here, d is equal to h sine of theta, because the height is equal to the hypotenuse d times the sine of theta, so it's the equation in reverse. And if any work is put into the system, if any force acts, and it would be that force times distance that would go in this component right here. But that's the general approach of how you solve equations, of how you solve problems using the inclined plane and energy considerations. Now we have five examples on the board, we'll quickly go over each one of them, and it builds on the previous knowledge. So the first example is, there's no friction, Initial velocity, a start is zero, the object begins to slide down the incline, we want to know what the final velocity is. Again, we use our energy conservation equation. No work put into the system because no external force is acting besides gravity. The initial potential energy is mgh. No initial kinetic energy is not moving. Final potential energy is zero because it's at the bottom. It's moving so the final kinetic energy is 1 half mv squared and no energy loss because there was no friction. When we solve that equation for v, we can see that the final velocity is equal to the square root of 2gh. Now this will be seen in many cases in the future. So remember that if there's nothing happening, for example, if you drop an object from a certain height, when it reaches the bottom, the velocity will be the square root of 2gh. No energy was lost due to friction, so it doesn't matter if it's simply dropped or if it goes along an incline. 
Now we add friction. Now we have a coefficient of friction. So how does that change everything? Well, everything else stays the same. We have the initial potential energy, no work put into the system, no initial kinetic energy. We have final kinetic energy, and we have energy loss due to overcoming friction, which is work to overcome friction or force times distance. Notice mg cosine theta is equal to the friction force. It's the normal force times mu when the normal force is equal to mg cos theta. So mg cos theta times mu, which is the friction force, times the distance traveled is the energy lost from overcoming that friction. So now you can see that the velocity is equal to the square root of 2gh, same thing again, minus some velocity because we have to lose energy to, due to overcoming friction. Here, again, we go to no friction, so there's no friction term, but now we have a force acting on the object. And notice that the force is acting the opposite direction from the acceleration. So it's not adding work to the system, it's actually taking energy out by working against it. So here, we use the energy equation again, but notice the, the work term, work put into the system, it's actually negative work put into the system because the displacement is this way and the force is in the opposite direction. So it's minus force times distance. We still have an initial potential energy, we have a final kinetic energy and no energy loss because there's no friction. And so now you can see that the velocity at the end is equal to the square root of 2gh, there's a 2gh again, minus the amount of velocity due to the force acting in the opposite direction, which essentially takes energy out of the system. Here we're going to combine the two. We're going to have friction and the force pushing in the opposite direction. So notice we still have the minus F times D. It's negative work put into the system because we're pushing in the opposite direction of the acceleration, which is in this direction. We still have the initial potential energy, MGH. No initial kinetic energy. We start at zero, velocity equals zero. No final potential energy when we reach the bottom. Kinetic energy, one half mv squared when we reach the bottom. And we're going to lose energy to overcome friction. Again, it's the force friction, mg cosine theta times mu, times the distance traveled d, and the relationship between d and h can be seen like that. Notice now the final velocity is again the square root of 2gh, minus some velocity lost due to friction, minus some velocity lost due to the force acting in the opposite direction. And now in number five, notice that what we've changed here is that we now push in the same direction as acceleration. So now we do add energy to the system. We do work on the system, adding energy to it. So now our work term becomes a positive F times D, force times distance, because the displacement and the force are in the same direction. We still have our initial MGH for potential energy. We still have our final kinetic energy, one half mv squared, and we still have energy loss with the friction, the friction force, mg cosine theta mu, times the distance traveled d. Notice that now when you solve for velocity, it's equal to the square root of 2gh, plus additional velocity due to the force acting in the same direction, but minus some velocity due to the force required to overcome friction or the work required to overcome friction. So here are five really good examples of how the energy equation, the energy principles are applied to an object sliding down an incline with all the various components, friction, no friction, force added, no force added, and there you are. That is how it's done.